We have the next person. This is her write-up on her medical history. So main issues are hot flashes, waking in the night, often because I'm too hot, but not always, stiff neck following riding accident in 2007, this has n hasn't been helped by working in an office. <laughs> okay. Um, back problems. Pelvis twisted following an Aikido um, session around 25 years ago, which led me to being off work and housebound for about a month. I then had a recurring back problem until I started regular yoga practice about 12 years ago. So we'll have to find out if she still has back pain or not because it, it came under the... Um, main issues category, so it's hard to, you know, but just gives us an idea. Early health history illnesses, measles aged approximately one. My mother says I was quite poor, I was quite poorly with it. Not sure what that means. Ill. Ill. I was... Poorly. Poorly means ill. Oh. Sick. Oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you were <laughs> poor. <laughs> Didn't have enough money. <laughs> and, the doc <laughs> and the doctor called, and the co doctor called daily for a week. Okay, well, that's a nice doctor. <laughs> and then what? And then she was poorly. <laughs> he called every day. Yeah, it's like, by the way, <laughs> uh, chicken pox upon you. So basically, no real medical history except then you know the back from twisting an Aikido and the stiff necks of riding accident. Stiff neck, so stiff neck, because of an accident. She's actually here. She can answer the questions. I'm just reading to them what you said. Hello. Hello. It's probably always been a little bit stiff because I've worked in an office for you know, 20 odd years. But the riding accident, um, I was thrown quite some way. Are we talking about so, horse riding? Horse riding, yeah. Also, I think uh, today is the horse riding day. Yeah. And I landed um, there, and it's been you know, sort of like that ever since. Mm. When was that? Um, 2007, I think it was, so quite a while ago. Okay. And this twisting of the pelvis in the yeah. Aikido session, do you still have back pain, or is it's, that because it makes it sound like bad. with yoga it disappeared? It helped, it's helped a lot, yes. Okay. Uh, it's sometimes still a little bit tight, but but there's nothing major anymore. Okay. Um, and where is, where, where was or where is the back pain? It actually twisted sort of the pelvis like that. It was, it was rather You bizarre. twist very well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My goodness, no, I mean, <laughs> she's like, I'm waiting for, for, for it to go 180 degrees or something the way you do it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. no, I mean, there was a huge flexibility in, in, you know, it's like, whoa. Both ways. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. I didn't realize that actually. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Okay. Do you know what you did in this Aikido no, session? Um, what it I just suddenly happened? To cause it. it was actually the next morning, but I'd been in um, the Aikido session. I think it was when we put the mats away. We used to have big, heavy mats, and we had to sort of kick them to put them on the top of the... And I felt a little so, yeah. twinge, and I got up the next morning, and it was all... You mean you, you kick the thing yeah. with your foot in order to be to able... To get it up to, to put the stuff Because it's too end. heavy to lift yeah. kind of thing? You hook your first and you flip it up and you catch it. There you go. <laughs> is, that, is that York University? No, no, oh. it was in um, Harrogate. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so the main thing is the stiff neck, the hot flashes, mm -hmm. and the insomnia. Yeah. Now, when you say waking up at night, mm -hmm. can you describe to me what that... Um, well, it is usually waking up during the night. Sometimes I can't fall asleep, but that's, that's rarer. And in the night, I just wake up and often I'm absolutely roasting hot sometimes. There are sweats as well, but not always. Okay. And it feels like the heat's coming really from inside the abdominal area and sometimes sort of around the back as well. Okay. And um, that happens a few times a night, once a night? A few uh, times a night normally. A few times a yeah. night. How long do you sleep before? You, I mean, so you go to sleep what time? Sure. Just for the um, you know, argument. Somewhere between 10 and 12. 10 and 12, Probably something. Probably about 11 ish normally. Okay, yeah. we'll call it 11. Yeah. And when, when does this, when do you wake up? Um, probably a few say? hours in, around about one ish first time, and then it's sort of on and off from then onwards. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what, what, what's your age? I'm 51. Okay. And your periods are? Um, I had a coil fitted. Oof. About five years ago. So, so you had a what? Coil. Um, coil. Into um, something else. Yes. Is that yeah. coil? At age um, 50, 40 something, something, you. Something, yeah. Yeah, but is yeah. it a marina coil? Yes, that's it. It's a marina coil, it's a hormonal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, but, and you did that for what purpose? Um, because I've been on the pill for oh, years and years and years, and uh, I stopped okay. taking that. And Stop taking the pill. This is much healthier for you. Yeah, it's like it's the yeah. same stuff, but different <laughs> entry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And by the way, while it's at it, it's going to like push and, and kind of create extra hormonal reactions in, in, in your okay. own body. <laughs> so the, we guarantee you won't get pregnant. But have you, have, do you have children at all? Yes. Okay. So you, there was a peer, time period when you're not on the pill. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And you're on the pill purely for? Contraception. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no. I mean, you know, usually women in the late forties are, you know, because your chances yeah. of getting pregnant are generally not that high. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering. I mean, I'm kind of wondering about that because, you know, like if some, you know, there are women who say, "Oh, darling, I, you just have to look at me and I get pregnant." So, so no, some women are incredibly, you know, it's high. They can't. There's, there's, you know, they get pregnant, and some women, you know, they go through all these fertility treatments in order for, you know, so. I'm not sure, is, is that... Yeah, and I actually went back to them last year and asked them you know, if they would take it out now, and they said, no, leave it for another year just to be on the safe side, <coughs> which seems to be you know, incredibly cautious. Okay, so in other words, your periods are regular and you have no idea if they're well, yours they, or well, not. Well, they actually stopped when I had the coil fitted, which they said might, be a, might happen, so I've, I've no idea whether I would have them now or not if I didn't have a coil in. Great. Okay, so we are going to assume that there are menopausal hot flashes because yeah. we, we, just because of your age, but we actually have no other correlation to it. How long have they been going on, the um, hot probably flashes? Probably about two years. They, they did actually do some tests when I went to the doctors last year, mm -hmm. and they said it was menopausal. Okay. But they still wouldn't take right. the coil out. Uh, do you have a thyroid problem? No. Okay, has it been tested? Um, no. Okay, um, turn around. Yeah. Do you see that this puffy, she's puffy in her throat, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. You know, they, I'm wondering if there's something in her, you know, with her thyroid. So, um. And also, I don't know if it's obviously she's pounds or something, but it's affecting her, her gait, she's turned. And so whether you've ever had, that was anything when you were younger or? No. Mm -hmm. right. You mean that the right foot slightly turns out? She's already in. Yeah. yeah. Left. Oh, that this yeah. one's... Yeah. yeah. So whether that's something to do with pelvic shift and stuff as well. Um, the first of my years, the child was a little bit, you know, sort of not made. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's my daughter's that looks the same, but she had tampates and her feet like that, so they bent them mm. right out, but it does oh. mean that she was right in. Yeah. It's quite similar. Mm. Interesting. All right, any other questions? Mama, Papa, any diseases? No. Sorry. sorry. Uh, not that I know of. No. Okay, grandparents, no. Also. Not that, I don't know. Okay. I don't think so. All right. Let's have you face up. Okay. Is this is for your name? knees. <laughs> Come a little bit further down. Yeah. All right. Um, when you say the neck is stiff, is there a particular place or...? It's, it's around the back here and also quite across the shoulders from about here. Okay. Both sides. Both sides. Yeah. Okay. Oh, very rapid pulse. Mm. Gonna be okay. nervous now. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And do you know what your blood pressure is by any chance? No. Okay. All right. I'm going to check Billy. Uh -huh. Is that okay? All right. So I'm just going to open this and lower it a little bit so that I get better access. All right. No. Okay. When I poke here, you just feel my fingers, right? Yeah. Okay. So now you know what my fingers feel like. Uh -huh. So if, if it feels different somewhere, let me know. Yeah. Okay? So. Same, right? Mm -hmm. She probably has Ren 9 pulse because I can sort of feel it already here, okay? That feels as if you're doing it a little bit harder. A little bit harder, yeah. okay? So there's something here. And if you can remember what it feels like in mm -hmm. this place, and later I'll give you a review so yeah. it won't be that hard. But, and yes, clearly something here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the pulse is very strong. Okay, and well, yeah, we call Ren 9 pulse, but we really need, mean around the navel and upwards, and tends to be more on the left, below the navel. And, but she has four o'clock, 
And how about eight o'clock? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So she ha she has clear adrenal, which is the dogma for hot flashes, just like TCM, kidney yin deficiency, right? So, and there is but okay. Yeah. Now, when I press, you feel your pulse, right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. okay. All right. So remember that both the pressure and and the feeling Not of the feeling. pulse. How's twelve? I can't feel the pulse there. Okay. No, no, no. The, the, you're not going to feel that. Yeah. Yeah. No, but is it okay? Is it, you know, in other words, is it's, it... It's more tender than there. A little yeah. more tender. Yeah. Okay, so 12 also. How's 15? That's even more. That's even more. Okay. That's very definitely more, yeah. Okay. Do you tend to worry? Yes, a lot. Okay, because worry reflex. Yeah. <laughs> so. Ren 15, we call worry reflex. Ah. People who worry tend to have that. <clears throat> if, no, no, no. If you go, if I go in, that's worry, okay? If I go up and towards the left, that would be cardiac reflex, which I didn't bother checking because, uh, well, I just did, yeah. um, but because, you know, she didn't say parents, grandparents, cardiac, so I had no, um, no motivation to go there. Okay. So REN15, if you press straight down, we call worry, but if you press up and towards the heart, then we call cardiac, okay? okay. So... Left side and right side, do they feel the same? You don't like this, apparently. No, it's, it's okay, that's my concentrating face. <laughs> it's just, oh, good, yes. concentrated face. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> don't concentrate, just... Okay. The, what does it feel like? Same? That's not, yeah. Okay, yeah. no problem. No need to concentrate. Right and left, do they feel the same? Yeah. So I'm trying to... Because many people, they, if you press... On the liver, they can't say what's going on, but they can tell the difference between the left and the right. You know? And also because under the ribs, they're afraid that it will be tickly. So it, since I'm really wanting the right side, in this country, in all likelihood, you're not going to find left. That dilemma basically exists in tropical countries. So if you're finding something under the ribs, chances are it's the liver. Okay. Some people will say they feel more on the left rather than the right. It's still, chances are it's a liver deficiency because we don't have tropical diseases like uh, dengue fever, malaria, stuff like that. Okay? Once you go to the, like, places like around the equator, you, you can't make those assumptions. Okay? But, so some people, <coughs> when you press... In the, on the right, they, they actually don't feel it. It's almost like numb. And they say, oh, it's, it feels more here. There's a good chance that that's a liver deficient type. And at that point, that's not her. What you do is you pinch and you pinch and it will be, she's actually quite even. You, it will be thicker on the right side. And okay. She's a teeny bit thicker on the right side, but not. Yeah, and they can tell. So can you tell the difference between this and this? It feels sort of a little bit lighter on that side when you touch. Okay, so she may have, you know, um, liver. L it, that would be deficient. Because excess, they go... <laughs> you know, they don't confuse that. You know, in other words, deficient liver can be a little bit numb, and they're going to say, oh, but this, the left side feels more. And my suggestion is that in this country, the chances of them having a spleen disease is so minimal that you have to assume that the, the left is the normal side and the right side is numb, therefore liver deficiency. Okay? And the way you check it is by the pinching. If the pinching is thicker, then probably liver deficiency. So just for the sake of trying, liver one, by the way, works very well for people with rapid pulses. So remember that this feels a little numb? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to ask you if that changes. Left side, right side. No change? No. It's the same as before. Okay, so it may not be a liver thing. It's just worth trying. Why did you choose the right liver, not the left liver part? Because the liver usually, unless she's one in three million, is usually on the right side. Right. Oh, but, but the liver is going across here, as you mentioned. It could be a problem here as well. No, no. Uh, did I mention the liver goes across to the no, left side? Comparing <laughs> left and right. Oh no, compare. Okay, comparing. Okay, she originally she said no, diff, no they're both the same. When I well, then I started talking about it and I pinched. Okay, and it felt like maybe there was a little bit thicker on the right. So I'm saying, therefore, 
if I find this, it's always going to, it's liver, and therefore I'm trying to fix the liver, which means I'm trying to fix it on the right side. I don't, the liver one on this side is not going to, as far as I know, is not likely to fix the liver. Mm -hmm. Unless one in three million people has liver on their left side and spleen on the right side. May I just ask another question? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, because we were talking about yeah, that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. um, so there's a cross syndrome, right? You probably know the okay, the cross that. syndrome is right side ribs, left side right. inguinal. So the liver three on the left side. But and large intestine four on the right, right. And that goes with an iron pumping cord. Right. Yes. That's Monica's cross. Um, yeah, but that's different. Um, yeah, I'm, and since I'm not a, that's not, I, mean, I know what you're talking about theoretically. It's not my treatment style so much. So I, I can't step, answer. Step, step. Yeah, but that, that's a different story altogether. So, um, Can I just ask? Yes. Sorry, if I, it's slightly back to something, back uh, to the thing you were doing. It's when okay. You went from REN 12, then you went to REN 15. I wondered why... Uh, I know. skipped. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Well, you, is it you're just taking some, you're just jumping, or you're not going REN 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You know, you're not. Okay. I also don't go stomach 27, yeah. stomach 28, yeah. stomach 29. Uh -huh. Stomach 30, no. <laughs> it's the subject is stomach 30. <laughs> stomach 30, teeny bit. No? Okay. Yeah, I don't, here. Okay, so she has stomach 28 ovary reflex, which makes sense. Okay, that, that was, you know, I check gynecology at the end, usually. Yeah, but I don't do, like for example, I didn't go REN 9, she has 10, 11, 12. I go 9. 10. So I have certain oh. land, yeah, from 9 I jump to 12. Yeah, you just said 10, but that's Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I don't go one by one. Yeah, 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 okay. I go the, the areas that represent something to me. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, she had 15, how about, now, for example, I, from 15 there's no 16, there's just 17. <laughs> How's 17? Feels okay. Okay, so you expect someone with 15 to possibly have 17 also. Okay. She said the heat was coming from... Like from around, well, area. yeah. It, from this area, or you said, it seemed like she said from here. So from the abdominal area, so somewhere around above this Oh, area. lower, yeah, yeah. And also, you know, it feels on the back there. Okay, let me check one more thing now that I'm seeing, I'm seeing something. Anything here? It feels a little tender. Yeah, a little tender in this one also, yeah, right? Also this there. is more. And this is the center one. Mm -hmm. And here? Not as much there. And here? Not much there, yeah. But when you say not as not mm -hmm. much, but there's something. I think she has pancreatitic tummy. Cause there's a slightly sounds, isn't it? Sounds, sounds horrible. Yeah. No, no, don't worry. She she just has a little bit puffy. You know, it's almost like there's a little heel there. What were you pressing there? Was it stomach? From stomach twenty one to stomach twenty one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So <coughs> all right. Um, one, two, three, four. Nothing. Is that cervical? Sorry? Is that cervical? Yes. No, no, SCM. SCM, yeah. SCM, <laughs> So, they're right, sorry. Right, right. One, I have to translate, you know, the, the cervical to cervical, you know, it's like, it's like cervical, okay. Because cervical to me sounds like survival. So, survival reflex is stomach nine, or do, or do four. You know, so I'm like, wait a sec, what's survival? <laughs> One, this is tighter, isn't it? Two, three, four, is that correct? Oh, oh that's clear. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, but nothing here. Not, not okay. the same thing I'm going to call this thyroid just because I'm thinking, because I'm thinking, mm. it doesn't mean it really is. How about scalenes? No. The second one you did this, was... This one. So there's more pressure than... Okay, there's the something. Two. Okay, so remember that one. And how about scalenes on this that side? One. Two, uh, three. Okay, so one third. and two. One yeah. and two and three here. And this guy, right? Yeah. Okay, just for one. So SCM. This is actually, it's the, the, I'm behind the SCM quite honestly uh, here. Um, no, I'm below stomach nine and behind the SC, a little bit behind the SCM. And I be, comp, I, I'm like here. So stomach nine is here, I, I think, so I'm kind of here, here, on her look, I'm here, whereas this is stomach nine. So I'm kind of behind the SCM, I can still, I'll consider it as part of the SCM, yes, but I'm thinking maybe it's thyroid, that's exactly what I'm about to check. 
any, yeah, this foot like stuff to do this. Any discomfort here? Okay, so I don't need to consider kidney nine right away, but there is something there. Okay. How is the throat? It's not too bad. I can f it feels. Okay, let me give you the baseline. This is the baseline. Yeah. What I want to do, find out is whether when I press on the f leg, mm -hmm. if it makes the throat better. And that by feels, how much? It feels as if there's less pressure now. There's less pressure. Yeah. Okay, then it means this one mm -hmm. affected it. Okay, because I'm pressing the same amount. Yeah. So, now, how much less pressure am I applying? Quite a lot less. Quite a lot less. Okay. And compare for me with this one. That feels not too much different. Maybe okay. It, maybe it's if it's a little more pressure, but not, not a lot. Okay. Okay. So, same trick with the abdomen. So, what, which points were those? Kidney that? seven. I was actually going to ignore kidney seven because she did not have kidney two pain. I was going to go for kidney nine. But as I was sliding, I felt that she has... Uh, Giga in <laughs> kidney, yeah. As I was sliding to, to find, because kidney nine I find by sliding. Mm. And as I was sliding, I could feel that she has like uneven, she has some puffiness around kidney seven. So that's why I tried kidney seven. Okay. And it helped that. Now, you have here, right? I want to know if the, the belly button gets better and so by how much. The Hold, Hold on. Kidney seven. And oh, no. four o'clock. Okay, adrenal. Yeah. So that doesn't feel as if you're pressing much at all. Right, okay. So, um, so because basically the, the dogma for hot flashes is adrenal, okay, she, which is either kidney 6 or kidney 7 or kidney 9, whatever adrenal you choose, plus kidney 27, plus spleen 9 upwards, gallbladder 34 do, towards spleen 9, plus... In, you know, gallbladder 27, 28, stomach 30 area, inguinal towards the leg. That's the dogma for... Can you say that okay. again? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, for hot flashes, you do adrenal treatment. Original adrenal treatment is kidney 6 plus 27. Mm -hmm. You may substitute kidney 6 with either kidney 7 <coughs> or kidney 9 or kidney 7 and 10. You know, but it's always something kidney below the knee plus kidney 27. Mm -hmm. Then for hot flashes, you add spleen 9, mm -hmm. you add go needled upwards, you add gallbladder 34, needle towards spleen 9, and then you add inguinal, needle towards the leg. Inguinal, inguinal meaning stomach, stomach 30, gallbladder 27, 28 area, this area here. And is that bilateral? And that's a bilateral treatment, yeah. Inguinal yes. Would you have considered kidney three because of the thyroid? I don't know. No, to quite honestly, I don't find that kidney three for hypothyroid is really that fabulous. I usually find other kidney points. Kidney three is not my best friend. You know, I don't resonate that much with kidney three. With the exception, with, it's not kidney three, kidney four for chest. And remind me um, to talk about that. Okay. Yes. Um, I was just there was a little bit of a discrepancy in some of the notes. I think there was there was kidney three for hypothyroid, which is I don't know loosely slow uh, what slow pulse type. But then I think there's an also a dogma for adrenal, which is kidney three for rapid pulse. Okay, hypothyroid and slow pulse are not. The, you made it. You for me, you made a jump that I would not have made. I would not suggest that hypothyroid is a slow pulse. Um, I. Get how you make that jump because you, you're translating something. I'm, I'm going to make your translation for you. Hypothyroid is like a young deficiency. Young deficiency should be slow pulse. But the reality of patients is that they can be young deficient. They'll be, you may not define them as young deficient in TCM because their pulse is rapid. But they are, the symptoms are young deficiency. So uh, hypothyroidism is not um, a, a slow pulse um, in, it does, does not necessitate a slow pulse in any way, shape, or form. The, you know, but, and yes, this thing about use kidney three in adrenal instead of kidney six in rapid pulse, that's like an old um, dogma that I can't say I follow. So, but you know, it's good to keep these things in mind. I mean, you have to understand that this, story, this style, from my perspective, has been around for like, you know, 25 years. And when I met Kiko, she just started studying with Monica, with, with Nagano. 
Okay? So we didn't have a system. In fact, the, the, some of the systemization was probably, well, not probably, I'm trying to be overly polite maybe. Uh, some of the systemization was never done by Kiko. Kiko just did. And some of us observed it and went, okay, we, we see that you're doing this and we see, you know. So people like myself and Holly Guzman and David Euler are, are really the people who kind of formulated some of these ideology, you know, systematizations that happen. But you have to remember that they're just, there was an idea and then the idea kind of disappeared over time. Just like, for example, the famous one is, you know, REN9. We never talked about REN9 pulse. We said if there's REN9 pressure pain, you use stomach 28. And then suddenly there was REN9 pulse, but you, all of you know that right stomach, 24, sorry, right stomach 24 is not the best one for REN9. It's just the, the nature of it is that um, things progress. So, you know, so Kiko went to Japan and saw Nagano do things, and she, she, you know, she wasn't with him the whole year. She would go for a week or two weeks and see what he's doing. I, I'm joking, like when you, know, you ask me, why is this? Because my teacher said so, because that's the way Kiko will answer it. But that was literally how I worked. You know, I knew, oh, the spleen 9 really good for gallbladder 21, behind, behind gallbladder 21 pain, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, I had all these zillions of points and what they do and how, you know, and slow, you know, the, the vocabulary increased. But the, the whole pic, the, well, I don't know if it's the whole picture, but the, to, to be able to paint a picture like I do now, like there is a system, there is adrenal, there is blah, blah, there is blah, blah. That I didn't, it really didn't fully coalesce for me until around 95. And still, in 95, the system was still growing quite a lot. There was a lot of new material that kept coming from Japan. It's only around 97 that it, it was, you could say, okay, there'll be new things, but it wasn't like this huge amount, that every class was just so totally different, you know? So, historically, you can see shifts. So, Kidney 3 is, quite honestly, for me, is an old ideology which I will consider, but it, it's not my primary thing, kidney, kidney three for rapid pulse. Make sense? So, so kidney, sorry. So I'll just give you a review. You have this one. Uh -huh. I'll call that adrenal left, adrenal right, yeah. REN9 pulse, REN12, and REN15. And then you have bottom of SEM, I call thyroid. You have scalenes number three. You have scalenes number one and two. Correct? Uh -huh. All right. Let me just check your occiput. Relax. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Ouch. Five. Okay. Yeah. Estrogen. The, the furthest one out, clearly estrogen. Let's see what she has on the right mm -hmm. side. One, two, three, four, five. Not so much on that side. But some? But some, yeah. Okay. So, so you're moving from GB16? From do 16 yeah, if we can call it do, it will be it, because then I don't think it's gallbladder. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going do 16, go, 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 go. Oh, thank you. And if there's seven of them, there's seven. If there's three, and, you know, depending on, on the size of my finger and the size of their neck. Through the mastoid. Through the mastoid, yeah. Okay, so she, hers is almost on the mastoid. Okay, and that's clearly estrogen style. I mean, she's manipulating all the time. You know, it's like birth control pill type person, you, you have to really consider that, okay? So this, this, the scalenes, the adrenal, and the REN9, 12 and 13, these, this is what I'm gonna try and make them disappear, okay? okay? If mm -hmm. I do, it means that what I, I believe that it affects your hot flashes as well. Mm -hmm. And then you also, if I recall, you had ovary here, mm -hmm. right? You feel that? Yeah. Not comfortable, so remember that. How about uterus reflex, kidney 13? That's not too bad. Okay. Kidney 13 this side? Not too bad. And stomach 28 over it. Okay, so just over it on the right side. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we're starting, yeah? Could you explain the scaling? <coughs> I don't know what scalings are, but why, why, why am I pressing? Checking. Because if she has, oh, um, because if while I'm checking the, the throat, I, I was checking the scalings, but also because um, if she has hot flash and, is, and she has worry reflex, okay, there may be this sy syndrome. I mean, I'm using more to show you, but basically the scalings are going to get tight, okay? 
because <laughs> of the worry or because uh, basically autonomic nervous system. Remember, I, I think from her pulse, I was asking about blood pressure because I thought she's autonomic nervous system possibility with, with a pulse. But now you, you're not nervous anymore. So not, no. <laughs> yeah. no, it's not as rapid and it's not as tight. Does that mean REM15 is not as sore? Still a sore, right? Yeah. Sore, yeah. Sore, right? This doesn't change. The abdomen doesn't change so quickly. The pulse, you know, the pulse changes in three seconds flat. That, that's why, to me, the abdomen is a little bit more reliable. Yeah. Okay. With, the, with the scalings, does it matter which ones are tender, or do they all mean the same thing? They all kind of mean the same thing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so back to kidney seven. So, adrenal left is okay now? Yeah. Or just about? Okay. How's REN9? That's still, That's still yeah. yeah. Okay. How's REN12? That's not too bad. Okay. Bad. How's 15? Yeah. That's still there. Yeah. Okay. So, 15 and 9 are not affected. Like they often are, you know, REN9 should be affected by kidney. Let me try kidney 9, because kidney 9 has a better chance of doing REN9. So, back to adrenal. That's not so bad at all. Okay. How's REN9? That's okay. Okay. Kidney 9 just has better resonance with, with REN9. How about... That's still quite That's similar. still. Okay. That, nobody, neither, none of them did. Which one's that one? CV? 12. Oh. Ren, 12. <laughs> and 15? That's a little tender. That, okay, fine. How about the, the scalings is here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How's that? That's okay. And, and the, the thyroid guy was here, right? That's okay. Yeah. Wait, oh, no, I'm not pressing. Uh, you're not pressing it yet. That's okay. Here? Oh, that's tender. Okay. How's now? That's better. Okay. So it looks yeah. like kidney... Na hmm? Sorry, yeah. All kidney that. 9 seems to be, do a better job than just kidney 7, that's all. So I'm going to choose kidney 9 over kidney 7, still having REN12 and still having REN15. And I just accept that, you know, and so I'll, do, I'll find something else for them, okay? But the, the main point that we want to look into is that I'm not using kidney 9 just against what, you know, 4 o'clock. Okay, that that's not, that's, I'm, I'm trying to not just do kidney for, for its own thing, but try and find it against anything. And one more thing that I need to check is the hormonal possibility, um, the outside GB20. So let me do that. So you had here, right? Yeah. Okay. Any change? That's better. That's better. Yeah. Okay. And next. That's okay. Okay. What now. Uh, UB66. Sorry. <laughs> I know this class is going to be the what's that <laughs> class. Because No, no. Until, until I tell you when I, until I coordinate my mouth with my fingers, it's going to be the what's that <laughs> class. The next thing you've done is UB66. Yeah, now I'm testing. Nine. Yeah. What's that for? After kidney, oh, hormonal treatment. UB66 is, is water on water. We say estrogen, um, you know. So I want to, how is the adrenal reflex? That feels okay. Okay. How's REN9? That's still a little tender. A little tender. How's 12? And that. That's still fully on. Th 15? That's not too bad now. Okay, so estrogen causes you to worry too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how is... Scalene. It's okay. Okay, excuse me. And how is thyroid? It's still a little tender. Okay, but this is good. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm not starting to needle until I figured as, as much as possible with it. Okay, next. So is REN12 Ren 12 and REN9? REN12 and f 15 is okay with... I'm going to check everything with everything. Don't worry, you know, because it's just easier for me to do that. Um, REN12 right now is the, real, the stubborn one that neither 9 nor 66 are willing to do. Okay. Next, if we're going with standard... Oh, and I still have to deal with the neck. Okay. Spleen 9... How's adrenal? Looks okay. Okay. Now, you know that spleen 9 and adrenal have no relationship. Okay. So the relationship is because of hot... F this, it's the right point for her because of hot flashes. How's REN9? That's okay too. 
how is twelve? Oh. Uh, okay, how, is it improved? Yeah. By how so. much? Um, probably more than fifty percent. Okay, and this is—is is this the first time this point is improved by? I can't remember. Okay, right. hold on. We're talking this yeah. one. Is that improved? Yeah. Okay, tell me which one does the best job. One. Two. Wait, okay, up to now. No. Okay. Three. I think probably one. Okay, but it sounds like one and three are kind of close. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Neck tightness. Um, you said it's around here? It's around there and under here as well. And under here, like here? So it goes from here and all, all the way up. Back, yeah. Okay, so look, sounds like levator. One, two, oh, there, okay. There Phrenic nerve. Three, four, five, six. And six. Okay, so small intestine 13 and C3. Okay, so small intestine 13, bend your leg for, for me. Okay, thank you. Small intestine 13 is a hormonal point also. So let me see if UB66 as a hormonal can, can do the trick. How's now? That's fine. That's, not That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Now you had here, right? Yeah. Okay. When I press on the foot, that's, that's gone down. Okay, so her neck right now appears to be, it only appears to be until proven differently, hormonal, hormonally related neck. Okay, now let's, do an, let's try another trick because that's our subject supposedly. Since stomach 30 is also hormonal, one second if you don't mind. Okay, so you had here mm -hmm. and here. Yeah. Okay, when I... How's this one? I can hardly feel that at all, no. Okay. Pressing stomach and 30. Stomach 30, yeah. Our subject. <laughs> and how's this? That's better. Not great, but still better. Not 100%. The foot did a better job for this. Yeah. Okay. So... Yes, yeah. No, no, no. Cervical. Oh, that was cervical. C3. Phrenic nerve. Okay. So she... But remember, I'm going to do stomach 30 on... She doesn't have pressure pain on stomach. I'm going to do stomach 30 on her anyway. Okay, so let me see before I started. So I have already established that I can do adrenal, um, spleen 9, and UB66. I'm basically on hot flashes plus hormonal. Let me, I'm going to, stomach 30 is part of that um, treatment for hot flashes anyway. Let me see if liver 4, as a representative of stomach 30, right, because both confer authority. I want to see what liver 4 is going to do. But REN12 is still a bit unresolved. REN12, oh wait, but REN, okay, thank you. How's REN12? That's not bad at all. Yeah. With stomach 30? With stomach 30. It's not good or it's good? It's not bad at all. Oh, I thought it was <laughs> 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 you, you can retranslate, but okay. So when I press liver 4, how's REN12? That's fine. That's fine. How is phrenic? That's fine as well. And how is small intestine 13? It's a little Hold on. twitchy. How's now? Not bad. Okay, yeah, I, ch I changed the way I was mm -hmm. doing. So, um, again, just to sort of suggest that this, this liver 4, stomach 30, you know, uh, axis, doesn't have to be a combination, has a strong uh, effect on the body. Okay. Is that, does the, liver, the fact that you just did the liver force um, to resolve a bunch of things in the neck and the cerv cervical area, and does that mean you won't have to kneel stomach 30 now? You're dropping that uh, No, I still you will. I still will. Uh, you, could, you could do that. No, it doesn't take priority. It's, it's almost like preparing for. Okay. Okay. So. <coughs> you okay? Yeah. Okay. You've had needles before? Yeah. Okay, fine. You've done liver four first? Yeah, and I'll do, yeah. Uh, before the kidney? It's no. okay. Why? Because kidneys deepest needs the longest time. So the five seconds are going to make a huge difference, right? Well, no, because that was the one that knocked out most of me. Kidney nine but was the one here. Yeah, but, but I'm doing it. It's not like I'm not, no. So it doesn't really matter. See, I check every, I check as many of the points first. When, then when I have, and now I'm needling, after when I'm finished, if there's anything left, 
then I, you know, but which, the order in which I needle them is not that important. Although there is something in my opinion that is important. Kidney nine comes before 27. Yes. yes. That to me is important. That's the same channel. It quite makes sense, right? Yeah, no, but generally I tend to needle from bottom to top and take out from top to bottom. Okay, it's just, and so that's really my logic for liver four before kidney nine was, I'm going from the bottom to the top. Okay. And so for example, under the third toe does not follow this rule, simply because it's a point that scares people, I leave it to the end. Oh, I put that in first. <laughs> <laughs> to get rid of it. <laughs> but the problem is you, yeah, but you, you want to make sure the patient's still there for the rest of it. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. If you use if you use a point twelve, it's it really saves a lot of trouble. Okay. You had here, and you had here, right? How's this one? The ovary reflex? Hardly any at all. Okay. And kidney nine is not supposed to do ovary reflex. It's supposed to be kidney seven. Supposed to resonate with kidney. With, with the ovary. Sorry, say that again, Alfie. Kidney seven, generally, we say, is, resonates with the ovary more than kidney nine. Okay. okay. Kidney, 10. kidney 10 resonates with hormones. Kidney 10 and UB66 are good friends because they want both water on water. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is like, you know, there, there are these ideas that we have, but when you see a person, it may work very differently. Okay. How is four o'clock? I mean, eight o'clock? That's still a little tender, but it's not, not... Okay, hold on, let me move a little bit. That's better. Okay. This one's okay now? Yeah. And run nine's okay? Yeah. How's run 15? That's okay too. Good. Yeah. All right. And here you have both one and two, correct? When I press here, how's one and how's two? How do I feel them at all? Okay, good. Kidney nine. Kidney nine. Okay. And this time I'll add liver for afterwards. <laughs> no, I mean, it just happened that way. It's not... Uh... Okay. Then finish the adrenal with kidney 27. Because she's... Well, first of all, she shows adrenal. And secondly, by dogma, she's adrenal because of hot flashes. Okay. No, you can pop it where you put kidney 27. Yeah, so here. This will be kidney 27, so ah, if you want to okay. poke. So the sternum is much closer. It's, the, it's on, I have to be just outside the sternum. I'm needling towards the sternum, and it's just below the clavicle. So I don't know what the name is. There's literally a dip there. there there's yeah. no, um, for me, there's no, no other place that I would go to. <laughs> I would go, yeah, yeah, your finger was probably a little Sorry. wider. No, 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 no. So, yeah, I would say yes. Alvi, you mentioned um, gallbladder 34 for the hot flashes, but you didn't test it. Is that because it's not as important for... Um, my belief is that what happens is the gallbladder 34... Okay, I'll, I'll show you in a second yeah. what happened. The gallbladder 34... First of all, she has torque. The gallbladder 34 releases the sacroiliac ligaments... Remember, the sacroiliac ligaments are going to release the, the parasympathetic plexus of, of the sacrum, meaning they are going to affect the gonads. And I think that's why gallbladder 34 is added in. So, let me Can I ask show you. With yes. Um, I think it was shown to us as well that they can come out wider as well for us, or sometimes on the adrenal. Don't know whether that's... Then what? It can be gone wider if... So, so yeah, so if it's not having such an effect on 27 here, it can come out a bit wider. Uh, I... Okay. I can't answer that. I don't... That's not my experience. Okay. And I will say that I generally... Occasionally you'll see Kiko holding 27. You know, if you didn't get what you wanted out of 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock... Yeah you'll hold kidney 27 and, and see if they get a better effect. Like you've tried everything you can. You've done, you've milked kidney line before kidney 10 as much as you can. This poor kidney line ain't giving nothing more. Okay. You're trying to see, can I get more? You know, 
Um, but I've not seen, I have not seen Kiko go further out, and I don't. But if other people do and it works, you know, it's possible. You know, Nagano's theory, in my opinion, that's what happens. The reason why we do kidney test 27 is Nagano's theory is, the point is called uh, um, fushu, okay, the shoe of the foo organs. Nagano calls it parathyroid shoe point, okay? He says when you tonify kidney or tonify gonads or tonify adrenals, it's all kind of the same thing, you have to subdue the parathyroid. Okay, so look, okay, uh, she's only hot flashes, okay? If we escalate her situation, she'll get osteoporosis. <laughs> like, no, 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 <laughs> I said if we escalate your situation, meaning like more severe, more severe in, in menopause, right? Yeah. Uh, what is osteoporosis? The gonads went down, okay? Her estrogen projection went down. The parathyroid goes up and leaches calcium out of the bone. That's what the parathyroid does, okay? So if you want the, the so when, when the ovaries go down, the parathyroid goes up. If I want to tonify the ovaries or the adrenal, I want to make sure the pa parathyroid is not gonna, needs to be subdued so that these guys can collect themselves, okay? So that's the role of 27, so to me, <coughs> It's not, it's, it's, a, it's almost like a support point in adrenal treatment, although we always use it, mm -hmm. but it's the support part of it, it's not the main part. That's why it, it doesn't quite occur to me to um, use, that. use that, that and check all the reflexes. I'm always checking it against the lower points. But if I didn't get everything I wanted out of them, yeah. then I, you know, I'm kind of like, okay, what can I milk out of 27? Could I move it a little bit and get more? Because I still have more to... Okay. They have to use that. They have to work. Mm -hmm. If I can't clear the adrenal... You will go a little... Go? Okay. And I'll tell you that, for example, Holly Guzman says, um, you know, you can go to kidney 26, and i never seen Kiko do it, and I don't do it. But everyone's going to have a slightly different version of the style. I don't know where it came and from. Somebody mentioned it when we were on the course. I tried it. It worked. It worked. Yeah. I then I, exactly. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm totally. I don't know why. I have. What do you mean? I know exactly why. Relax. Relax. I know exactly why. It worked. <laughs> why? Do, do you want to be sad because it worked? Because yeah. <laughs> it didn't fit the dogma? <laughs> it's like, okay, anything here? Uh, yeah. So remember that sacroiliac ligaments, piriformis, are highly correlated to gynecology. They control blood and nerve supply into the ovary and the uterus, okay? So now, Lawrence, okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to check gallbladder 34. I already, I don't have spleen 9, but I've checked it before. Gallbladder 34. Still there. Uh, let me move. Gallbladder 34. Oh, sacroiliac ligament. I did say. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> no, I probably wasn't. No, no, I'm joking. I'm <laughs> playing with you. Yeah. Gallbladder 34 and sacroiliac ligaments are correlated. Remember, gallbladder 34 is master of torque, and the place you're going to have torque the most is in the sacroiliac ligaments. Yeah. Okay. And you said that the sacroiliac okay. ligaments are correlated with gynae. Yes, because, because they control nerve and blood supply into the uterus and the ovaries. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not doing very well in this gallbladder 44. I don't like that. Okay. <laughs> How's that? That's a little less, but it's still a bit okay. tender. That's definitely better. Definitely better. Okay. You didn't need those green I didn't yet because we got distracted with gallbladder 34. <laughs> um, is the circulation of blood you mentioned sacred living and piriformis? Is that the same rationale for needling gallbladder 27 29 and menopausal dogma? No, that dogma is different. That dogma is releasing the inguinal releases she didn't show clearly. Um, it's heat flashing upwards is a constriction of the diaphragm. It's a mirror of the diaphragm. Does that make sense? Uh, no, sorry. This, okay. Look at my hands. You have this angle, then you have this angle. They mirror each other across the navel, right? There's a, like a triangle or a canopy here and a canopy here. I needle this canopy to release this canopy. 
I need to release this canopy in, or, you know, in order to release the diaphragm in order for the hot flashes so, so that there's freedom between the jaws, between the duntians. Does that, does that kind of make more sense? What, what are you talking about REN12 up there? REN12 is now okay, I believe. So you're higher up? When yeah. You, when you were going to need oh, the, the subcost, I'm talking about under the ribs. Ah, so you need little... In, no, no, I'm not. He asked me why, what's the dogma for doing gallbladder 28, stomach 30, inguinal? for hot flashes. That's part of the dogma for hot flashes. And I said, the rationale is it releases the ribs. Make sense? Yeah. Let me just do spleen 9 on this side. And then we'll check the other side with sacroiliac for gallbladder 34. You do not need to help. So I'm on the sacroiliac on the right side. Nothing? Uh, there. Okay. Not, not so much as okay. Okay. So here. Okay. She's a lefty because the left scalenes, I mean, she had more on the left anyway. Okay. Okay. When you say she's a lefty... Meaning more, sim more stuff showed on the left. Okay. But is there any... <laughs> she's... I, mean, I don't know if she... that would be or is that just... Um, if she came with a history... No, 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 for me, no. What it relates to for me is possibly cardiac um, type is, is more likely okay. to show, but no, otherwise, um, since she didn't, she, we asked her about history and she didn't have. Yeah. Okay. By the way, how's the neck now? That feels looser. Okay, don't be so surprised. <laughs> it's okay, it's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before, because she has REN9 pulse, which is, it's still there. It's better, but it's still there. So, now, do you feel the pulse when I press? Oh, yeah. Okay, because I prefer whatever they can tell me is better than just me just deciding. I can still feel it. Is it, is it more uh, muffled? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's more muffled in my finger. So, but I, you don't have to agree with me. You're allowed okay. to. You're totally allowed to not disagree. And mushu. To not disagree. Mushu. <laughs> Is that what I said? Yes. Oh, you're totally allowed to dis. To you're totally allowed to yes disagree. <laughs> <laughs> the English have Sorry. such strange phrases. <laughs> no wonder I can't speak English. <laughs> so, it's more muffled? Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can muffle it even more. I don't know if we can totally uh, shut it down, mm -hmm. quote unquote, you know, totally block it, but as much as we can. Yeah, that's, that's good. All right. Unless. All right. Still something there, though. Okay, let's see if our stomach 30 friend will, will contribute more. Okay. So now you basically, since I, as far as I know, there are no more reflexes. Is that correct? Yeah. And stomach 28. Okay. Scalene. Scalene 3. And thyroid. And next good. I still have to do UB66, by the way, because even, even though if it's gone, this one's okay now? Yeah. Okay, I'm still going to do you. Okay. Better. Okay, I'll still do UB66. But so I basically, well, let me check against, you know, because if the point is good, should they go on any reflex is my theory, right? You know, so that, that's the, the big difference in the way I teach. It's like, yes, there's the dogma, but if it works, it works for the whole body, right? So a little bit here, right? Okay. Boom. Yeah. Better. Okay, so that's going to be the one. And towards the leg. That's so cool. It's not, it's not going to be 30. Um, 30 is a little bit further in. I, you can call this maybe gallbladder 28. But it's the inguinal. Always needle inguinal. Remember, the dogma for um, hot flashes is adrenal, spleen 9, gallbladder 34, plus inguinal. Our gallbladder 34 is part of the hot flashes as well. Yes. That is the talk. 
Yeah, it's and yeah. well, Lawrence asked. No, you asked me why um, Gold Letter Thirty Four. One of you asked me why, and I said I think because it releases the sacral iliac. Right. As a torque point, it releases the sacral iliac. And she, does, and she had anyway. <laughs> no, but. Any woman in gynecology in, in menopause is going to have t there's going to be a piriform a, either piriformis or sacroiliac going on. Okay. Now, this side anything? No, that's fine. No, Hold on. What, what, one second. Let me just find. A little tender there. A little tender here. Yeah. Okay. So. Better. Lots better. Yeah. Lots. Okay. So the only difference between standard, I mean, the only thing I'm adding basically to her for, um, in her treatment for hot flashes, besides the dogma is Mushu, because she had Dren 9 Pulse, and UB66. Okay, otherwise she's like the standard protocol for hot flashes. Mm. The only thing that we really checked with, with any care was the kidney nine business, you know, which kidney point which is part of the, the, the standard thing that we should be doing for any kind of, are you okay? Yes. For any kind of adrenal, we should check which adrenal point is, you know, we're using. And you do tw that on both sides, although you only check one of the... You'd be 66, yeah. yeah, I check one, but now there's nothing to check against. But no, I mean, listen, nobody says estrogen depleted and this one's good. Mm. It's like, how, what woman can say my left ovary is, is fabulous and my right ovary? I mean, cyst, you, you can say, okay, I only do liver eight, one side to the cyst side. But depletion of, the, of, of estrogen production is, is, is that they both do it together. So. If, if a woman's on, um, has had breast cancer, or uh -huh. and she's on estrogen suppressing hormones, it's a big uh, issue. Do you do the UB66 on, uh, you know, yeah, I, I don't, I, until I see on the person and see what it does on the person, mm. I have no answer for it, you know. Um, so the best thing to do is ignore that and deal with um, cancer, liver 9, mm. under second toe, you know, small intestine 11. Second toe. Under second toe on the left side is tachycardia point. But under second toe, both sides is anti-cancer point. Okay, make sure REN12 is, is well addressed. Okay, they, you do not want to leave a patient with cancer with, with any, anything on REN12. You want to make sure any cancer patient, you check their liver very carefully and address it. And you want to make sure their thyroid is well, t well addressed. Um, you can then, you know, you can do the other standard stuff will be possibility of stomach chi for cancer types. Um, but to get into like this whole argument about is it right to detoxify, is it right to blah, blah, is it, you know, <coughs> it's like, so if large intestine 15 does a fabulous job on a patient like that, large 15, mm -hmm. it, detox. Oh. You know, because there's the argument of if they're taking chemo, you shouldn't detox them out of the chemo, because the detox will take the chemo out as well, and you do not want to do that. How mm. long after? Depending on the person, who, the, the theory of the person, there's no clarity around that. You know, that people say this, it's, it's bullshit. You can, you can, and I know lots of people do it and get perfectly good results. You know, how do you, you know, it's hard to understand. You know, like the, we have an... It's, so it's up to you, and it, I'm going to say, well, it's going to be up to the, how, what kind of feedback you're getting on, on the patient themselves. Okay? So two years after wouldn't be an issue? No, I would, no, two years after is definitely not an issue. No, no, no. I, you know, during, as long as, the, here is the problem. As long as they're taking chemo, and since people nowadays do rounds of chemo, mm. so I do once a week for six weeks and I stop for four weeks or something and then another, you know, course of six weeks, etc. You know, then until they're fully, you know, if you want to really go dogmatically with the idea you do not detox, you do not, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I wouldn't, um, you know, but I think with, I mean, I think it's different with herbs than with acupuncture. I think you can do things with acupuncture because acupuncture is more of a balancing you know, it's like, it's hard to tell an herb to play it both ways. 
it's much easier in, in with acupuncture. You're just moving things around a little. You know, it's a little bit more flexible. You know, it's just like people say, don't do spleen six in pregnancy. It's like, how many of you have needled spleen six in pregnancy? And, and there's, I mean, not a problem at all because your needles are much thinner and you're not like, you know, yeah. If you're going to put electric stim on spleen six and you use like a really thick needle, yeah, probably not a good idea. You know, but if you're using number one, you know, it's like, you know what, it's not a big deal. So when you say make sure that, I've heard this before about the REN12, you know, make sure you've got strong chops so much in order, you know, to get well. What, what kind of points are you looking at treatment? REN12 is affected by stomach chi, kidney and immune points. It's specifically in cancer, it's really important. And the reason why, in, I mean, of course, anybody get what, you know, stomach is the center of life, or, you know, that kind of stuff. But the thing is, with cancer, you need good enzymatic action. You said you need one. Good enzymatic action. Or perhaps it's enzymatic. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? Enzymatic action or enzymatic? <laughs> Meaning, Pancreas has to work. You need to pancreas and the liver to produce enzymes to break down things. If you have a tumor, it needs to be broken down with something. What in the body? In the body, what breaks down things? Enzymes, right? You need, you know. That's why, for example, if a patient is strong, they can, you know, a lot of people go on, you know, the Gersten diet. Okay. Yeah, it's a fabulous diet for strong people, but it's a raw foods diet. So the weak, the person who's like very weak probably can't assimilate from it and they may be better off with a chi more Chinese-like diet, okay? So y y the, the, what you're doing is you're breaking down. For example, the, the whole Gershon, um, y you know, philosophy also includes coffee enemas, mm. okay? Fabulous for the person who's strong. You know, it's, it's very detoxifying for the liver, but not everybody can withstand that kind of... <laughs> you know, pulling on the liver by the intestines. So you have to figure out what's going to, you know, you know, within the, these different paradigms, which ones do well for a patient. Thankfully for us, you can test it. You know, for the nutritionist, it's not so easy to test. It's like, go try the diet, and, you know, a month later they go, oh, my God, this diet was horrible. I, was th I don't have any energy. I was throwing up the whole time. You know, it's like... We have a much, you know, in a sense, we have an easier life. So, yes. I ask, um, you talked about yes, you these <laughs> points um, releasing sort of the, the diaphragm yes. area. Mm -hmm. Is that for, that can be any constricted diaphragm? Area? Yes, you can. It would not be the first thing I would choose for a constricted diaphragm, but it will be something you can add. So, yes, absolutely. Um, but, so, for example, a lot of constricted diaphragms, I would use lung four, right? So, Oxygen supply. Um, but and third toe is third toe diaphragm. Third toe is autonomic nervous system, is blood pressure. But yeah, okay, third toe, yeah, under third toe or the joy of under third toe will relate to diaphragm more, generally more in the back to T7 than to the front. It might relate to the front as well. Okay? Yes. Can I rewind that there was, um, you mentioned on the, on the abdominal diagnosis and puffiness along the line. That she had rent, you know, stomach 21 to stomach 21, REN 12 B. So that was resolved by? Uh, by usually adrenal. And what you can add to it, it's the dogma for that is adrenal plus spleen 5 plus lung 5. Some people consider lung 5 part of adrenal. I don't. Okay. So um, we can recheck. That's for the fine. fine. Yeah. So I think in her case, because you know, it was mild. If it was true pancre if she really had pancreatitis, I would definitely have to add spleen five. Why didn't you sort of ask about her sugar consumption? Because I forgot? No, 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 <laughs> I don't know, I just no, didn't. Did you, you, you just now wouldn't you think Oh, because of the pancreatic tummy? No, 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 hold on. Pancreatic tummy and sugar are not related, sorry. Uh-uh. 
No, they're not. They're, they're two different entities that may have, um, you know, like in a Venn diagram, there may be an intersection of people who have both. No, they're two, I, I understand what you're saying, but sh sugar and pancreas are related. Okay, but sugar and pancreatitic, that's an inflammation. That's not, you know, it's not, no, they're, they're, they're two separate syndromes that happen to be in the pancreas. I thought the idea was if you had too much sugar... You will get inflammation, get yeah. And, ...and your pancreas swells and you... No, you're looking horrible. Oh, okay. No, 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 I'm not horrible. No, 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 no. No, I see, yeah. Okay, there's some... That's different. Um, there is this whole understanding that sugar is an inflammatory contributor. You know, like this, the whole notion in the last, say, five to ten years has been that the, the problem in all our food is really the sugar. And all this stuff about, you know, um, non-fat and stuff, that was a 30, 40 year ideology that should, that should not have never been followed and what we really need fat. And that sugar is the culprit of everything. Sugar is what creates inflammation and sugar is, you know. So yeah, but pancreatitis is not, they may have sugar issues, but you've got plenty of pancreatitic types that have nothing to do with sugar. You know, it's possible that sugar contributes. I don't know, because it, since it contributes to inflammations in general. But to say pancreatitic tummy and sugar type are, you know, they're related on the back in terms of they both use T11, T12. But you can, you don't have to be a sugar type to have pancreatitic uh, abdomen. So what, what is pan pancreatitic? Well, originally it was found in people who have pancreatitis. And the reason, inflammation of the pancreas. And it shows as a beam. Yeah. You know, that, that's in, I believe Western medicine says the same thing, that it, it will have puffiness here, I don't know. Yeah. You know, because if the, if the pancreas is swollen, it goes across here. And it, it, I mean, it's, it's not a TCM sort of idea. What, that, what does that actually um, mean? Yeah. Uh, these people will uh, have n a lot of nausea. They'll have difficulty in digestion. It's primarily a nausea sort of situation. Um, and they're going to have, obviously going to have very weak digestion, and it's painful. The big thing is it really is painful. Okay, so um, the reason why it's adrenal treatment is because it's it's an it's the anti the treatment at least used to be um, prednisone. Therefore, and Agano was basically imitating it by doing adrenal treatment like for the prednisone, spleen 5 anti-inflammatory, spleen 5 is our anti-inflammatory point in general, liver 5 is another anti-inflammatory, but liver 5 you can say is a little bit more um, connected with the lower jaw than spleen 5. And um, the other anti-inflammatory point, by the way, is stomach 41, but don't take regular stomach 41 and needle towards um, kidney 6. Go one tendon, o tendon over, so you still one tender o tendon away from gallbladder 40, and needle towards gallbladder 40. That's stomach 41 for anti-inflammatory. Anywhere. Anywhere, yeah. But especially in digestive system. Okay. Um, so pancreatitis is, um, you know, so Nagano was, was looking at adrenal as, as the equivalent of prednisone and strengthen it with lung five because it's the water on metal, meaning it's metal is mother of water. So strengthen the adrenal treatment with lung five plus spleen five, which is anti-inflammatory. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. I just say about the pancreatitis? Yes, please. If anybody suspects it, mm -hmm. it really needs Western diagnosis because you can miss a C head cancer at the head of the pancreas. It's a very silent cancer, but it's yeah. very prolific. Yeah, anything to do with pancreas, if you are suspicious of pancreas. Pa pancreatic cancer comes on, gets usually discovered very, very late. Yeah. So it's better nowadays, but if you talk to anyone, say, six years ago, I think it's changed about five or six years ago, I'm not sure. But if you had pancreatic cancer, you were basically at a diagnosis of six months. You know, that was like the standard, you know. And it was very rare, if existed at all, that people survived pancreatic cancer because it's, it's discovered very late and there's no way to cure it. It's different now, 
And my understanding is that it depends on where the cancer is in the pancreas, they can do different things for it. So you do have now pancreatic cancer survivors. Um, so, but yeah, it, and by the way, pancreatitis is extremely painful. <laughs> Okay, you're not going to miss pancreas, if they, what I'm talking about pancreatitic abdomen, meaning there is a weakness in the pancreas. It's not exactly the same as they actually have pancreatitis. Pancreatitis is not a fatal disease, but it's a very unpleasant disease. Um, so it, it's, it kind of sucks. Um, but yeah, if you find something in pancreas, it's good to refer them out for further checks. Yeah, because... Um, you know, we, they do have better ability to, to diagnose pancreatic cancers and get survival rates. Sorry. I'm not saying that's warranted here. I'm aware we've got a patient on the couch. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. She... <laughs> no, we're not. You don't. No, no, no. No, you're fine. She only has hot flashes right now. <laughs> yeah. She came in with hot flashes and well, she's leaving with the pancreas behind if need be. <laughs> so. Sorry, I have a yes. last, last question. Um, you mentioned cancer points and you mm -hmm. said under second toe, you said... Liver nine. Liver nine. And then, and then make sure REN, the other three things that you always have to check is the state of REN12, the state of the liver and the state of the thyroid. Okay, and you didn't mention any other points? Small intestine 11, did you mention? Uh, for breast, well, small intestine 11 has two uses, okay, specifically in the terms of cancer. Number one, breast cancer, small intestine 11 is the shoe point of the breast. So any breast issues, we use small intestine 11. The other thing is small intestine 11, especially on the right side, is strongly correlated with the actions of the liver, the gallbladder, and the stomach possibly small intestine as well. Therefore, it ensures good digestion since you need good digestion for cancer, okay, in order to digest the cancer, okay, then small intestine 11 is gonna come in. Um, and I, oh, and stomach chi I mentioned about cancer. That's common. Yes. It was too quick for me. So we, on, on, we were talking about cancer points. On, on Under second toe, toe. Liver nine. Liver nine. And check. And then check liver, check stomach, REN12, and check thyroid, stomach nine area. And treat. And small intestine correlates to? It could be one of those things to increase enzymatic action, to, make, to, to increase, the, increase the strength of the digestive system. Let's put it this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's take her out and flip her. What, what time is the next patient at 4 or 3.30? Four, okay, we're good. So we'll turn you over. Yes. Going back to what Marie was saying, yes. where, where, would, where do we make the distinction with, with sort of what we're calling pancreatic tummy and, and sort of a little bit of tenderness? Is it a question of the severity of the tenderness? Or if you get real pain, we think of referring people? Or? Okay. Uh, it's hard for me to say exactly because I don't, I'm not faced with that. The, the decision is a little different. I, I also work in a country where, um, I mean, people usually come to me after they've been to Western people, you know. And also, the, you know, for me to refer for, t I mean, I can suggest, yes. but it's um, not all that useful, especially since we're talking about, you know, the, the finances of healthcare are a little bit different in the US, okay? Um, the idea is that if, well, if they have something in a pancreas, you can, again, you know, but, you know, it's like Eileen saying, it, it's like, there's a, you want to think that there's a possibility of something serious, and at the same time, you don't want, you know, it, it's like the, the medical model that starts with, let's eliminate cancer, and let's eliminate heart attack, and, you know, and okay, and now we can examine that the toenail is, you know, has been ripped, and we need to give you some antibiotic cream for it, you know, I'm exaggerating, granted. But there is a very strong mentality in the Western medical field of eliminating the big killers as a diagnostician, which we are not obligated under, okay? So, but because pancreatic cancers are, you know, if you, if you happen to discover them early, you will, um, you have a much better survival rate. Does it relate to pancreatic tummy? I don't know. Oh, I can't say. 
I, I can't say that pancreatic cancer shows. I mean, I've only had two pancreatic cancers patients in all my years of practice. So, um, I mean, mostly because, you know, by the time they, it happens, they don't come to me. You know, because it is really, it, it's, it, it's a very serious um, situation and very painful. So, um, so I have one who was a survivor and one that was doing chemo. And it's and obviously actually relative to five years ago is already a, a long-term survivor because she's already a year and a half. So, so there are ways, and, but, but, and hers is genetic, the, the one that's a year and a half sta staying or, you know, already. So um, this her parents had, and she kind of knew that at a certain age she, she was very likely to get because it, it runs in a family that way. So, so she had it before she came to you? Well, she came to me while she's on chemo and she's still on chemo. You know, so um, basically, is it fair to say that if you get a lot of pain between stomach twenty ones, we should be alarmed? I wouldn't say alarmed. You should be aware. Okay. And then, you know, and you know, I, what I would do is, cons you know, do you, do you have like an MD type that you can that you can trust? Yeah. That you can consult with. I would call that person that person and say, this is what I have. This is what I find. It may mean nothing to them. But, you know, and then they can give you, um, I mean, the, the thing is, in this country, the MDs have a lot less incentive to ask you to refer, I'm assuming, because the national, I mean, if you, if they get paid by the salary, not by the patient. If someone went to the GP and said, my acupuncturist has referred me to get a cancer test because they've hurt my abdomen and it hurts, they're probably not, I don't know. Yeah, so what you, well, that's why I'm suggesting to him that he has to have a person that he trusts. And the other thing is, you tell the patient, don't tell them you acupuncturists say. Tell them that I just heard my, my third and five ways removed had pancreatic cancer. I'm wondering if I have it. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, they have to manipulate their way. I mean, I, you can't do everything for the patient. You know, it's like you can't fight the system, you know. But that's why, I, well, I let, why don't you, you know, since it, <laughs> you can explain the subject a little bit better than me in terms of like, you know, at, at what point you want to get alarmed with pancreas. You mentioned at the beginning about pancreatic tumour. Yeah. And then it went on to pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. I just mentioned if it was like that, that's when your appetite checked out. When it's pancreatitis. Yeah, but pancreatic abdomen doesn't have to be pancreatitis. So, yeah, but if it's pancreatitis, okay, they don't need you to refer them to the MD. Somebody who has pancreatitis has seen an MD because they're in horrible pain and they're vomiting. You know, they are not waiting for you to diagnose them. They came with a diagnosis. That's different than me saying you have pancreatitic tummy, which means there's a weakness in the pancreas. A friend of mine just had it actually, and he went to the GP, and he said it felt like incredibly bad heartburn, like really nasty heartburn. Hmm. He had gallstones as well, so gallstones cause the pancreatitis. So oh, going on. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And the GP gave him. Uh, Tums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tums. He said, "Go away and come back tomorrow." Okay, so he came back tomorrow. It's really, really severe. <laughs> and the next day, he was admitted. Yeah, well, you know, everybody, you know, we all have to evaluate according to what we can, and we're all going to make mistakes. You know, it's easy hindsight to say, oh, well, it should have been, you know, the, the doctor's an idiot. We, we don't know that. You know, it's like, it's just, you have to try different things. But yeah, so I, my sense is if you just find puffiness, I don't think that's cause for referral right away. That's, that's been my, I mean, I've never referred someone just because they have this, because otherwise I'll be keeping the MDs in my area very busy, <laughs> you know, more than they want to. <laughs> so, so, all right. You okay? Yeah. All right, fine. let's take these out. And generally, how long would you not leave the needle? In? Generally, on the front between 15 and 20 minutes, yeah. and on the back between 10 and 15. Uh, yeah. But it also depends on what else is going on. Because if I'm busy in another, if I'm, if it, it's not going to happen. You know, sometimes I calculate. Oh, I need to be at this patient's room. You know, in two minutes. 
you know, so I'll take the needles out a teeny bit early, it's not the end of the world, or if I leave them a little extra, it's certainly not a big deal. Yeah? All right, let's have you stand up and see how your um, neck is. Just take a little walk around and... So anybody who comes with clear symptoms, like insomnia, hot flashes, I can't check. But anybody who comes with very clear symptom, um, like pain, I ask them before I turn them over, I want to know how, how much better um, their, 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 that symptom is before I turn them over. It's, it's still a little stiff, but it does feel better. Still a little stiff. Yeah. By percentage, how much would you say is gone How much or how much is left? It's quite a bit gone, because usually if I turn like this, I can um, usually feel it here. Okay. And I can feel it just a little bit, whereas normally it would be really quite sharp. Okay. All right, let's put you face down. Mm -hmm. It's generally physius muscle area. Uh, yeah, but inner yin is actually better for it. It releases gallbladder 21, but hers is smoytestin 13. So hers was more, to me, hormonally related. Anything left here? No. Okay. One, two, three. One was a little more time. One. Okay, and one, two, three. Okay. They're okay. So one. So left side is more like autonomic nervous system. So let me try just for just quickly. Let me see if how is now? Better. That's better. Lots better? Okay. Now do two. I remember I check do two uh, against left side outer UB line by the scapula. Okay, because that represents to me autonomic nervous system because of the pacemaker. Okay, now, um, how is this here? That's fine. And this here? Yeah, okay. Okay, anything here? T11, T12? No, that's fine. Okay, T7? Okay. Yeah. And T5. Okay. okay, so she's not showing anything necessarily, but you still had some stiffness. Okay, boom. anything here? Boom, boom, boom. I thought the top maybe, no? No. How about this side? One, two, three, four. Hmm? This one? Okay, how about, is there an equivalent here? No, okay. Is that so, no, this is um, more like immune area, immune yeah. points. Yeah. I mean, Sandra 16. Okay, so right this left. one, uh, left. Okay, so this one and this one. Now we know that this one disappears with do two. Let me just, for the sake of it, see. How's now? That's good as well. That's good as well. Yeah. Okay. So exactly why do two fixes Sandra 16, I don't know. Is Sandra 16 an immune point? Sandra 16 is reflection of, of glands, of immune, yeah, yeah. That's 32. Yeah, women's point, you be, thir you know, kind of like an automatic, and I'll do sacroiliac as well. What's that, sorry? That's 32. Yeah. It's kind of like one of those things that you, you know, because um, she, it's not just that it's, it's women's point, it's also she has hormonal manipulation. So it's very important to do that. 32. Thank you. Did you, but were you checking that as a reflex for something? No, she, her only ref, I checked the back, there were on, the only reflexes I found was uh, our UB line and um, sound job 16 at this point. Sorry? Out of bladder. UB 40 to 43. Nine. Which I consider to be autonomic nervous system. And what points are those? Sacroiliac? Sac UB 32 and sacroiliac. And if you want to get technical, sacroiliac should really be here. But if I try to go here between the sacrum and the iliac crest, I would have no space to get the needle in. So I'm trying to get the, the, um, the ligament from the insertion. The iliac bone is here, and, but the ligament's going to go over the bone. So I can get it from here, from, from the side of the iliac crest. Does that make sense? So you, what, you ran your finger over until it just dropped? Over a little bit. Is yes, it's much easier than trying to, to get the space between the, the, the sacrum and the ilium because it's just, um, 
um, there, there's no space there. For mo on most people, it's very, very narrow. So um, it's, it's really inconvenient to, to go exactly, you know, because sacroiliac ligament sounds like it should be the same between the sacrum and ilium. But look, this, her sacrum cannot possibly be this wide. Because if the spine is this wide, the sacrum is going to be a little wider, but it's not going to be three times as wide as the spine. The sacrum is going to end here. Okay, so you can see that I'm, I'm quite lateral to, to the sacrum. I'm not touching the sacrum, even though I'm saying it's sacroiliac ligament, because I'm getting that ligament from, totally from the side of the iliac. Okay, sometimes when you roll your finger over the um, uh, SI joint, uh -huh. well, there's really, really gnarly sort of gristly tubes, if you like. Yeah. Autoimmune types will have it. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, mm? Is that called ropey socks? Ropey socks. <laughs> <laughs> no, autoimmune type people will have it, and yes, yeah, some people, um, it's kind of weird, it's, it's a strange mixture between ropey and um, gummy. gummy, yeah, like there's something almost soft like margarine in a sense, and that, but at the same time it's really ropey. Yeah, so you want to, you know, if, if it's very painful, resolve it first and, and needle, but you definitely want to needle into it. And what have you needled higher up in the back, sorry, that you just covered over? T5. T5, thank you. Uh, sorry, actually, that was T7. Now, let me do T5 as well because, because of the neck. I was, the T7 was really for the hot flashes to release the diaphragm, but the T5, you know, I should do for the neck. So you see that how the back always ends up somehow involving T11, 12, T7, T5. You know, it's, it's, you, you're not going to be able to get away from, from at least part of that combination with, with due to and, sacro, and or sacroiliac. It's just always going to show up. Sorry, could I just clarify, out of bladder line shows autonomic nervous system? On the left side. The UB42, 43 on the left side because it's in the back of the heart. And one of the places where the nervous system, there's a constant nervous system activity yeah. through the pacemaker is in the heart. Okay, so it's left side only. In a, and I use that to confirm do two. I use do two to release it. I, um, Abby, I didn't, I didn't um, catch when you were doing T7, T5, what, what your process was. For her, T7, okay. The process is that, it's, I mean, all she's missing is T11, T12, and I really should be doing it, but, you know, we'll let her go. Back. It's a standard back thing, but I'm trying to be a little cleaner. Back for, for everything. All right. standard, standard is standard. <laughs> Everyone's standard. Uh, T7 for her, because of diaphragm, remember, part of hot flashes is... Oh, I should do, though, UB52 on her as continuation of Ren9 pulse. That is something that we should do for her. So let's do that. See, she didn't have enough reflexes to check, and that's not atypical for people on the back, that there's not a lot to check. She had a fair amount of the abdomen. We had a fair amount to go against and check, and we don't have that on her back. Does that to some extent happen if like, you've done a good job on the front? No, not necessarily. <laughs> It's a, it's a nice idea. I like that. You should check her back before you treat it. Yeah. So, so in a, you know, if you want to do that, you can check the back first, check the front first, treat the front, then see if the back got a lot better or something. Yeah. The problem is then you can't do a back treat. If, let's say the front treatment was the best, you know, and figure, you know, you don't have any reflexes in the back, then you don't treat the back. So I prefer to treat the back anyway, so why bother checking? Can you talk us through those last two? Did you say? UB 52, yeah. outside kidney shoe. If somebody has Ren 9 pulse, that's a weak Dantian. Okay, I want to strengthen, and she was adrenal type also. I want to strengthen the kidneys. Thank you. Yeah, so automatically, um, so you can think again, good friend of Mushu, or especially if there was Ren 9 pulse, is going to, on the back is UB52. So you can always think about associating points from the front treatment to the back treatment. What, what, you know, you kind of can have some ideas of what am I, you know, wow, she had spleen 9, oh, maybe I'll do T11, T12 on the back. But we get, gave it, brought us to the same point, that wasn't really useful. <laughs> I'm saying thinking, why wouldn't you have yeah. gone about the 23, yeah. you see? For some reason, we always choose 52. 
and not. I mean, we some things we choose for 23, but yes. for Ren 9 Pulse, that's, it's definitely, yeah, because the reasoning should be the same. I think, here's what I, th okay. Do you, sorry, do you see how I'm needling 52? I'm getting a lot more for the quadratus lumborum than if I did 23. I'm just, you know, so I think it's just, um, it, it's getting more space or something. I mean, you spoke before about uh, you two attempting now and again to do insurance. Mm -hmm. my, my little brain thing was thinking, well, I'll give them better 23 because it's great to, to terrify the kidney while you're at it because... Fair. Not, but you... So you think that 23 is better insurance than 52? The question is... When do you, do you bring in your, your idea of the insurance policy? Um, well, the insurance policy has already happened here. I just didn't talk about it in the sense that once I did 2-2, two, two, there was basically nothing left to treat. So the rest was insurance. The T7, I, I didn't check T7 against anything, T5 against anything, UB52. You know, I, you know, the sacroiliac I did because, you know, this is, this is part of insurance or, or what you call fluff. You know, because I'm not, it's not releasing something in particular at this point. Make sense? Yeah. Why is uh, bladder 52 used rather than bladder 23? Is... I'm just asked that. No, I know. She didn't like the answer. I mean, what can I, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's about weak abdomen, red nine pulse and all of that. But why, why does bladder 52 strengthen that more than the kidney shoe point? I don't know, but let me. Well, yeah, the answer I gave was I think it get you get more of the QL that way. But okay, let me let me give you a different answer. Go on. This is a weak dantian. This is not a weak kidney, right? So the name for UB twenty three is Shen Shu kidney Shu. The name of 52 is? Uh, sh not sh, it's something else, but it's j. <laughs> it's the willpower. I, I can't remember what, you know, the sh I think goes with, with, uh, with um, yi. It's yi sh. The one outside UB20 is yi sh. Yeah. And uh, the one outside, it's j something. Okay, so it's the willpower. In other words, if you have a weak dantian, it's a way of squeeze, you know, like the will, what, what, when you have good willpower, what do you do? You squeeze yourself to move forward, mm -hmm. okay? So that's why, to me, it relates to the same idea of mushu. I mean, I'm stretching it a bit here, but, you know, you <laughs> squeeze it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Listen, I, I mean, because my other, I mean, you know what my other answer was going to be. Because you don't? You, <laughs> you, you finally got it. <laughs> I've, not, I've not really heard Kiko or yourself mentioning bladder 23, you know. Just... Well, it's not a big point for us. Mm -hmm. It's true. I, would, I agree. It's a very... <sighs> Actually, we ba barely do the inner bladder line. Mm -hmm. And you, there are passages that seem to suggest that one should not be needling the bladder shoe points. Are, yeah, yeah, I know. Obviously, it's garbage because m many people needle them all the time, so it can't be that serious. But there are passages that seem to suggest that's, that's not the, it's not a very elegant way of doing it. So it may be that it came from that and you're using the outer line as a... So you know, the same for bladder 43 over 13 as well, don't you? 42 over 13. For the most part, I will. It's more, for me, it's more powerful, except when they have on thir when clearly they have gummy or, you know, on 13, I will use 13. Uh, but yeah, we do seem to have, I, I think you're right, we do seem to have a preference for outer UB line over the inner UB line. Um, with the exception of UB 17, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, yeah that, that is absolutely correct. And I don't know where that comes from. Or the Huato. You use the Huato. Well, the uh, no, else. wait. I use the Watos and Kiko uses either Watos or the Du. But yes, we are much, we are definitely over either one. If you're talking about either line, the Du Watto lines are the ones that are really the big ones for us. The other stuff is like, that's the insurance. <laughs> That's the fluff. <laughs> so 
Uh, yeah. On a similar sort of note, do you subscribe to the theory at all of the Hwartors being more the physical and then as it gets out of the organs and then because the names of the outer bladder channels tend to have the spirits in them, it's more psychological. Do you have that? Sort of? No. I mean, I know exactly what you mean in terms of the, the um, because of the names. I, no. Um, no, and my, my question is going to be like, why would the spiritual choose to go further out? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like it makes no, it makes no sense. Yeah. And I think the names of the, you know, in terms of the names of the points, I think it's just that um, with the back shoe points, there's very, very little rhyme and reason because it's, it's very, you know, this is the kidney shoe, this is the blubber shoe. The only one, well, there's two that are different. One is the Jue Yin shoe instead of pericardium shoe. And uh, the other one is the Dushu at T6, which is a little bit odd. But everything else is like it's, you know. So now that they're done with the shoe line and they want to give, it seems to me, that's my interpretation. And now they need to give names to the outer UB line. Well, you can't say, you know, they could have said, um, you know, like, for example, for UB52, they call, could have said, Wai Shen Shu. Okay, outside Shenshu. Okay, but they, you know, so but so they they had another model that they they did something that correlates to the five elements. I think the po the point of this was to show, you know, the, the reflection of because there's also let, let's take the next patient and I'll I'll, I'll talk to you, uh, about this this idea of um, how they are arranged because they're arranged. It looks like they're arranged by location. And it's true, but they're also arranged by, by dogma. There's a do dogma involved in here. Okay, so... Just basically, yes. question. Yes. In your, in your sacral point, you look for the ligament. What is your feeling for in order to hit the ligament? So is it just a proximate? It's going to be... Is it what? A is it just a proximate that you go, okay, it's like one centimeter or one Okay. This is really, but I'm here. This is the bone. This is the iliac bone. This is the sacrum. Go, go ahead and touch. Well, Jane. Okay. So if you, right where you are is officially sacroiliac ligament. Yes. If I felt comfortable putting a needle there, I would totally do it. Mm -hmm. okay. But I'm not always comfortable. It's for most people, it's too narrow. So what I do is I go over this big bone and now touch, touch this here, and you'll feel what you'll know what I'm talking about. Right. There's a tightness there. So what happens is the ligament went from here and it goes... Right. Okay. I get, I... This is the iliac. Leave, you yep. leave your fingers okay. bent. The iliac is like this. It's yes. curved like this. Right. This is the sacrum. Yep. The, the ligament goes like this and it doesn't touch here. It wraps around yeah, this thing. So I'm trying to get into here because right. it's a lot easier than getting in here with the sacrum so, there. So Make you're sense? not going from the top, but you're on... On the iliac. From the top of the iliac? Yes. No, I, I no. originally thought when you described it that you go from the top no, of the side. No, 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 no. I'm going from the side needling towards opposite gallbladder 26. Yes. Okay. Or towards chi hai or something like yes, that. Yes. Okay. Not, not straight in. The, the idea is moving to there. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. And you're trying to dig under into the, towards the sacrum, mm -hmm. which obviously you can't do because you have a, an iliac in between. Uh, right. <laughs> but yeah. You only Thank need you. one needle to do that. You can do as many as you want. Well, you can do as many as you want. It's fine. You can do a few. If the main complaint was low back pain, pain, I would have done more than more than these. Here, following down. You're going to do more. This is the sacrum. Wait. This is the edge of the sacrum, I believe. This is the beginning of the iliac crest. Instead of going here, I went outside. See that you can feel the bone, and you can feel you. Yeah. So now you're looking for the places of gummy, of tautness in that, in that ligament. Okay. Is it ever painful around this area when you needle it? Uh, it no, painful? just with your finger. No. The needle usually is not a problem. Uh, it can happen, but generally, no. What's problematic is you, they don't like your fingers. Yeah, and you mox that sometimes, don't you? Moxa? Oh, no. If it's cold, you can do mox on top of the needle, but not OQ. Not, not the direct mox. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, now, just a quick question. I know you're probably going to just say yes, but if somebody came into you with acute sciatic pain or uh -huh. bent over, you would lay them down and just do horror diagnosis and treat them exactly the same? Yes, That's but I would consider, yeah, I would, I would, one of 
of the place I poke is the sciatic and see if it's better, you know, if my treatment's getting better, and then I can address the sciatic problem also kind of as if separately after I've addressed the abdomen. But I first do the abdomen, yes. Exactly the same.